在山。Good evening, and welcome to Healing Our Brokenness, Episode Fifty, entitled "The Journey." On this particular episode, I am going to read from my first book, which is entitled "The Journey: Walking in God's Grace, Mercy." And blessings, and I'm going to start off reading from the chapter that is entitled "Re-Entering Egypt." So I'm going to read from page 96 until page 102. Midway through November, I secured employment at a manufacturing company. Praise the Lord! I was finally able to start paying some of the bills that I was behind on. This job was a life changer in more ways than one. Right away, I was put on a pedestal. The owner loved me, and he loved the way that I performed my job. I was the best thing that ever happened to them. So I thought. There were some things that started to concern me right away. I heard one CSR telling the other CSR that she wanted to make sure that she trained me on everything. And that she didn't want what happened to the other one to happen to me. She also made remarks referencing that the other lady was used as a scapegoat for a lot of the things that were going on within the company. Some of the things that she was saying were direct, but there were other things that were beneath the surface, and I was able to read between the lines. A month after I started. She made the comment, "You are probably wondering what you got yourself into." It wasn't long before I realized that this company operated off of fear and anxiety, blame shifting, and a culture of anything and everything goes. It was so filled with anxiety and fear that you could feel the air cut with a knife. Saying good morning or good evening resulted in angry stares and being cursed out. When I didn't respond to the drama and intensity of stress at work with intense anger or cursing, it almost made my coworkers even more angrier. I stuck out like a sore thumb. I felt like I was being watched constantly. After having gone through trauma already, it made my anxiety level go up even more. A shipping guy was hired to replace the other person who left in the shipping department. This particular guy also caught on to the bad culture right away. In the beginning, I was able to take my lunch breaks when I was supposed to. And take a couple of quick water breaks as well. However, what I noticed after time is that I became so overloaded with work that I was unable to take lunch breaks. And if I chose to take my lunch break, then that would mean I would probably have to would have been at work three hours later. At a certain point, even though the grief was still there, I couldn't grieve like I needed to. Work was being used as a coping mechanism. I was still dealing with an extreme amount of trauma and grief. However, I was not able to go deep in any of these areas because of working and trying to get sleep, and thus the trauma symptoms got worse and worse. When I did think about sharing different things with my therapist. 
I noticed that my body would start immediately folding inward and I was not able to go there because every time I did in my head and rehearsed what I was going to say, the movie reel would start playing. I kept telling myself every week, no, I cannot talk about this. It had taken me a year and a half in the very beginning of therapy just to wrap my mind around the person who I was married to, let alone start dealing with issues that were out there for my childhood. My therapist told me that when I talked in therapy, I kept everything in a little box. This was true. I was afraid to go outside of the box and began to peel away family issues because I did not want to deal with the trauma symptoms that I knew would occur once I started talking. I knew once I opened that door, there was no turning back. However, I also knew that if I didn't, full healing to whatever degree God would have me to be fully healed would not take place. I slowly but surely began to open the door about family issues about five months after working at the manufacturing company. In April of 2015, I had the most amazing thing to happen. I had lost contact with my dad in August of 2013, and I had done several searches on the internet without any luck. However, I decided to start looking for him again in early April. The kids and I drove to Chicago and looked around on the last block that he lived on. We rang bells and found out that he had moved a while ago. I knew that when the appropriate time would come, that we would find him. I mentioned to a family member that I was looking for him, and he said that he would be on the lookout since he drives a CTA bus in Chicago. About a week later, I had a dream that I was sitting next to my dad on the bus, and he had the same buffalo brown leather jacket on with the scraggly collar that he wore when I was a kid. When I looked down at the rest of his body, he had on two pair of pants. He wore a pair of pants, jeans with a pair of flannel pants on underneath. The jeans were ripped from the knee down to the ankle and his shoes were torn up. I sat there on the bus looking at him and wondering if he was homeless. In the dream, he was riding the bus home with me. When I woke up, I did not want to get too excited. However, I had a feeling coming over me as if God was trying to give me a message in a dream. I had to calm myself down because I did not want to get too excited and get my hopes up high. But I felt like I was going to see him soon. About a week later, I hosted a small party at my house. During the party, the doorbell rang and it was my aunt. I went to the door and she stated that she wanted to talk to me outside. I went outside to talk to her, and I noticed that a family member was sitting in the driver's seat of the car. My aunt kept telling me to come closer to her so that she could talk to me. I looked over to the car, and I kept thinking to myself that I wondered who that person was sitting in the back seat. I studied the car even more, and then I said to myself, that man looks like my dad. Sure enough, it was him. He got out of the car and came over to give me a hug. I completely lost it at this point. He kept saying, baby, don't cry. You're going to make me cry. I thought that he was dead just to think about the fact that God loved me enough to give me a sneak preview of what would happen on the weekend was just amazing. The other thing that coincided with the dream is that my dad stated that there was a period of time that he was homeless. There's no limit to what it is that God can and will do to show us that he loves us. An HR person was hired in May of 2015. Right away, I knew that something was wrong. This was also during the time that I was staying later and later at work and I could hardly stretch my body. I started having severe panic attacks at work 
that were so bad it got to the point where some days I wanted to literally run out the door. If I stood up in my seat and worked for about 15 minutes standing up, sometimes the anxiety would subside, but I could feel that my body was slowly breaking down. I started becoming extremely sensitive to light, and I was having more and more difficulty falling asleep at night. There were some mornings when I felt so exhausted that I thought that I would pass out. Within three to four days after the HR person started, she vehemently inquired about my position with the other CSRs. The other thing that came up is that she was inquiring about how many hours I worked per week, along with the fact that she told me that she wanted me to start clocking in. This raised a red flag. I asked her that if this was new company policy for star, uh, salary employees. She responded back to the email the next day and stated that it was a new policy. And then she immediately sent out an email to the other employees in the company stating that they were to stop clocking in if they were salaried employees. I could hardly believe what I was reading. Basically, they were trying to find anything that they could in order to get rid of me. Another thing that I noticed is that they had certain employees to start coming in earlier and staying later so that it would be more than one person witnessing what time I was coming in and what time I was leaving for the day. I was getting bullied by the sales account manager almost on a daily basis. I started covering myself via emails, and when he caught on, he started calling me on the phone and bullying me. He had a pattern of making promises to clients about parts being ready, not asking the guys in the warehouse about the production time, and having the clients to blast me when the parts were not ready. Another thing that I noticed while working there is that the warehouse prepared the parts for my clients at the last minute. The location for parts in the warehouse were off for my clients, and I had clients with language barriers. When I mentioned this to upper management, they shrugged it off. However, as soon as the customer complained about not receiving the parts, then it was blamed on me. Another thing that I noticed is that the employees were very unprofessional in the emails that were sent to the clients. I was written up and put on a pretend performance evaluation plan by the HR person. The Holy Spirit made it known to me that there were a few people working there who were out to get me. And they were not going to stop until I was out the door. They told me a series of steps to take. I took care with those steps, and then after feeling comfortable about this new plan, a month had passed, and I was written up again. With the second write-up, I was given a series of steps that I should have followed that were different from the first set of, set of steps. And then on the third and final write-up, I was given a different series of steps to follow that were different from the first and the second series of steps. Basically, the expectations of this job changed every time they wrote me up. It was all part of the plan to get rid of me. I also realized and shared with my friend Rose and that this job mirrored the exact same situation of what had gone on in my marriage for years. I was put on a pedestal when we were dating. I was Mark's woman. But then as soon as he decided that he wanted out, which was during my second pregnancy, he started giving me a lot of different expectations, in which case it didn't matter what I did. He wanted out and he was going to keep changing the rules of the game to make me believe that if I had just done something different, then I could get back to how it was in the beginning. The shipping person was fired two months before I was fired. I was not surprised because I knew that anyone working there who didn't fit in with the culture of the blame system would not be there long. The sad part about is that I knew three days before they fired him that he was going to be fired. The Holy Spirit had revealed the whole thing to me. They gave him a lot of new responsibilities and they expected him to understand everything within a matter of two days. They fired him and when the customers called complaining about their parts not being ready, his name was given as the scapegoat. At this time, I had to keep reminding myself, for well, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, 
against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. On my last day of work, I checked my emails in the morning, and there was an email from the HR person asking how long I was going to work for the day. I thought that this was quite unusual, and I told her that there was quite a bit of work done, work to get done for the day, and I planned on leaving at 4.30. However, because of everything I had to get done, it might be 30 minutes later. Right away, I knew that this particular day was the day that I was going to get fired. It was exactly three months from the date of the very first write-up. At about three o'clock, I received a post-it note on my desk saying, stating that I needed to come and meet with HR in her office at four o'clock. I had not taken lunch yet, so I decided to take a late lunch at around 3.30. I told the receptionist that I was only going to take 20 minutes for lunch and would be right back. She had a funny look on her face and she didn't respond to anything that I said. She had started acting strange towards me the day before. I knew she was a part of the exit process. I went outside during my lunch break and I called my children and told them that I was going to be fired and that they should probably leave home soon. I also called my mom and told her. She told me to call her afterwards. Sure enough, at four o'clock, we had the meeting and I was fired by the HR person. Her reasoning for firing me was that I did not contact people who were over me in order to get the customer's parts to them. And she also stated that it took me too long to resolve the problem. I told her that I forwarded all of my research to the appropriate department and they told me that they needed me to do more research. I told her that she was CC'd on this situation and she knew that my hands were tied and that I was waiting for my supervisor to research some things. And that basically the reason why I was fired is because the customers got mad because the process was taking too long. She knew that what I was saying was correct. So she came up with another reason that I got fired. When I covered myself on this accusation, then she came, with two, came up with two other reasons. It was never ending. As we were leaving her office, she asked me if I needed to call someone to pick me up. I told her that I didn't. She asked me again as if perhaps I didn't understand the question. I gave her the same answer. Her face was one of shock. I waited for the Lord to release me from this job just as I waited for him to release me from my marriage. And in both cases, I walked out with grace. That concludes the reading of the journey, walking in God's grace, mercy, and blessings. And at the ending part of the reading, it left off with me getting fired from the job that I was working at. The thing that was tripped out about it is that four and a half months into the job, at the point where my health started to fail, I knew that I needed to have walked out and left the job there. I was fighting between walking out and I was fighting between continuing to work because my ex-husband was not paying the additional support money that he was scheduled to pay for alimony and child support. However, I know that if I had left that job, God would have continued to make a way. And sometimes when we don't follow through and do what we need to do, we suffer because of that. I literally almost died when my thyroid level ended up going to about 50 times the norm after working at this particular company. And my adrenal glands were shot. I had to ask myself, was all of this worth it? In Romans 8, 28, God tells us, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are the called according to his purpose. And because of what that scripture says, even uh, whether our situations are good or whether they are bad, God will use them all. However, we do not have to get to the point of near death before we make a move. Sometimes we make a move too soon, but sometimes we make a move way too late. And in the end, we realize that it was not worth it. And that's what ended up happening to me. I hope that this reading from the journey 
walking in God's grace, mercy, and blessings, put something on your heart, whether it's going through your own journey in life or your own experience with a toxic work environment and whether you left on time or not, whether you left too soon and didn't wait for God to release you. I hope that you have a blessed rest of your weekend and until next time. into places to learn instead of burn and perish away in nights never so cold without his grace how could I say that I've seen the world from his great love how could I know what he for me